If there is a game that is filled with symbolism, it is the Persona series. With stories involving the interplay between perception and reality, the plot often explores how one can influence the other. Psychological landscape, demonic alter egos, Jungian psychology, there is a lot to unpack in each game. A highlight of the series is the design of the persona of the main cast because it is both symbolic of the character it is attached to and takes design elements from the mythological, folklore, or literary figure they are portraying. Persona 5 extends the symbolism to the costume of the main cast, and even their weapons. One of the recurring themes of the game is what it calls the Wings of Rebellion, or how the act of rebellion gives power to act to the main cast. The costume of the characters are often inspired by what the character perceives as rebellion, making for a varied set of costumes that are telling of the personality and conflicts of the main cast. Another one of Persona 5's themes is the Gentleman Thief trope. The game involves infiltration, theft, calling cards, theatricality, and other elements from the trope. In addition, another influence on the game are heist stories like Ocean's Eleven or Leverage, with each of the party members taking on a particular thief role. These roles can be inferred from their confidant paths, persona, weapons, and even their costumes. So in this video, we will take a look at each character to study the different symbols and see how they relate to the character's personality and story. This video will contain spoilers for the story of Persona 5. Joker is the thief, the burglar, the infiltrator. From the opening cinematic, we can see him do all sorts of fancy stunts and flips to evade capture. We can also see this during all the sneaking segments in the game. Joker is also the one picking locks and bypassing security systems. While you may have a cat on your team, the protagonist is the real cat burglar. His persona, Arsène, is a reference to Arsène Lupin, a character from Maurice Leblanc's novels and the archetypal gentleman thief. We can see that he has his top hat, and despite being a demonic personification of rebellion, Arsène is still dressed in formal wear. The large wings are supposed to represent the freedom of a thief on how a thief is free to go wherever they want. This could be referring to the infiltration of the palaces, as something only the Phantom Thieves can do. Arsène Lupin was also known to target criminals and help law-abiding citizens, similar to the Phantom Thieves. Another nod to Arsène is the name of the coffee shop that the protagonist stays at, which is named after the creator of the character. Joker's long black coat is a callback to Arsène's black cape. What is interesting is that his costume is almost all black, with the exception of his red gloves. This could tie into his criminal record. Throughout the game, we see people constantly remind Joker that he has a criminal record, and in Japan, this can damage someone's reputation. The red gloves could be seen as a symbol of how everyone can only ever see his criminal record, the metaphorical blood on his hands. In the eyes of society, he has stopped becoming a person. He is just a criminal now. Joker's weapon of a knife is the typical rogue weapon, a hidden blade used to kill rather than fight. It's a weapon that would require more finesse instead of power, but it can get the job done. From his knowledge about the metaverse and his all-out attack, we can infer that Morgana is the mastermind. Joker might be the leader, but Morgana is the one that pushes the Phantom Thieves to continue their activities teaching them everything they know about burglary, and sometimes calling out their next target. We do learn later on that Morgana is doing all this to reach the depths of mementos, so he does have his own agenda in helping the Phantom Thieves. His persona, Zorro, might be the one that looks closest to the original. All of Zorro's trademarks can be seen. The cape, the sword, the mustache, and the persona even does the Z slash motion. Zorro, created by the writer Johnston McCulley, is another vigilante type who fights for the common people against the abuses of tyrannical officers. When you look at Morgana's metaverse form, there is one word that comes to mind. A swashbuckler. His fur makes it look like he is wearing a Zorro-style mask or bandana, and he is using a pirate cutlass. One of the things that Morgana struggles with is all the uncertainty surrounding him, and his costume is actually telling of what Morgana hopes his human form will look like, a dashing debonair Errol Flynn type. This connects to his persona, when Zoro removes his mask, he is Don Diego de la Vega, a nobleman. 
Ryuji is the muscle of the team. This can be seen with his weapons, bludgeons and shotguns, two blunt instruments that lack any finesse to them, but their effectivity is undeniable. In fact, some of the Phantom Thieves even joke that Ryuji could never do the things that Joker can because he lacks grace. His persona is Captain Kidd, which could be based off the 17th century privateer, William Kidd. William Kidd was tried and executed for piracy, though some claim the charges were false. Similar to that, Ryuji is turned into a pariah for picking a fight with Kamoshida, and ever since then everyone treats him like a delinquent. Captain Kidd told Ryuji that the Skull of Rebellion is your flag henceforth. Just as pirates are not apologetic about being pirates, Ryuji no longer holds back his disgust of rotten adults. Since people think of him as a delinquent punk, he uses that image to give himself power, which is why his costume looks like that. A fun nod to fans of the series is that his costume is reminiscent of the persona Hellbiker. Anne is the con artist of the team. This can be seen in Sai's interrogation and the number of times the team uses her sex appeal to fool someone. It actually becomes a running gag among the Phantom Thieves on how horrible Anne's acting is, yet they are able to get away with it due to her good looks. Her persona, Carmen, is the titular character from a novella written by Prosper Merime, and more popularly, an opera composed by Georges Bizet. She is one of the literary figures that practically created the femme fatale archetype. The persona shows how she is able to entrance men due to her beauty. She even keeps her trademark cigarette. While Carmen does have a notorious reputation, she still manages to use her beauty and feminine wiles to get what she wants. We can see the parallels to Anne, whose exotic good looks and modeling side job causes people to gossip about her, earning her a reputation as well. Similar to Ryuji, An takes what people think of her as a seductress in the minx to give herself power, hence her leather dominatrix outfit and her weapon being a whip. She no longer cares about what people think of her or trying to resolve things peacefully. Now she does what she wants, even if it means taking advantage of her beauty. Yusuke is the team's forger and counterfeiter due to his ability to replicate skill cards. There is an irony to this as how his master Madarame would replicate paintings for profit. His persona of Goemon is based on another virtuous thief and folk hero. Legends regarding the outlaw mention him stealing from the rich to give to the poor. Goemon's outfit, makeup, and facial structure is very reminiscent of ukiyo-e paintings, perhaps another nod to Yusuke's artistic inclinations. There is also the number 5 and the word Ixikaba written in Goemon's clothing, both of which are references to his name. In Japanese, the number 5 is pronounced as Go. Ixikaba could be his first name of Ishikawa. There are only two historical records of the outlaw, and one of them writes his name as Ixikawa Goemon. Since Yusuke's art style is a traditional Japanese one, his idea of a trickster is based on Japanese folklore, specifically that of a kitsune or trickster fox. His weapon of a katana could be tied to the idea that the art style of calligraphy was used to inspire and refine swordsmanship. Samurais also learned calligraphy as part of their training. Makoto is both the analyst of the team and the getaway driver. Her persona is the only one that turns into a vehicle. In spite of being the student council president and the top of her class, Makoto can still be a bit reckless at times. She is the one seen most often driving Morgana, and from the way she handles Johanna, she can be aggressive behind a wheel. Her persona is Johanna, the fabled female pope. The head of the Catholic Church, the pope, has always been male, but legends say that Johanna was a woman who disguised herself as a man to enter the priesthood, eventually rising to the rank of pope. The only reason she was discovered is that during a ceremony, she collapsed and the physicians found that she was giving birth. This could relate to Makoto in that she was slowly but surely being forced into a role she did not want. If she did not do anything, she could have found herself in a prominent position, still trying to live up to everyone's expectation of her. Johanna's message emphasizes Makoto finding her own justice and not to lose sight of it. 
Makoto has been forced to comply and compromise with the expectations of others so much that she has lost sight of what she wants and what she believes to be right and wrong. The expectations placed upon Makoto are immense, so it would make sense that her idea of rebellion is someone who is free of those expectations, a biker. Her weapon of knuckles could be her Aikido training, but it could also be tied to her repressed anger. When she is finally sick of everyone telling her what to do, she charges at them full throttle. Futaba is, of course, the hacker of the team. It is how she contacts the Phantom Thieves and how she convinces them to help her. Her skills become invaluable against the more dangerous enemies of the Phantom Thieves. Her persona of Necronomicon could symbolize her seeking forbidden knowledge by means of her hacking. The Necronomicon is a fictional book created by H.P. Lovecraft which supposedly contains the secrets of the Old Ones and how to summon them. Necronomicon is portrayed as a UFO perhaps to symbolize Futaba's isolation and her focus on data analysis, similar to the idea that aliens abduct humans for experimentation. The gargoyles and uh, tentacles could be nod to the book's Lovecraftian origins. Futaba getting her persona is actually similar to how the Persona 4 cast obtained theirs. She had to face her shadow, the part of her that she doesn't want to admit. In an interesting twist, Futaba's shadow isn't malevolent, but rather represents the part of Futaba's heart that doesn't want to accept that her mother hates her. Deep in her heart, Futaba knows her mother loves her, but it has been buried by the lies told to her and the guilt she has weighed herself down with. This could be the reason why she passes out after you escape the palace. The Persona 4 characters were physically exhausted after coming to terms with their shadows and obtaining their personas. I don't think it is a coincidence that the brown-haired hacker with glasses has the codename Oracle. It is possibly a nod to the DC character of Oracle, who is Barbara Gordon who became a hacker for the Justice League after Joker crippled her. Much of Futaba's costume deals with cyberspace, which is the place where she performs her rebellion. Her mask looks like a VR headset and her costume is inspired by Tron. Haru is the insider, the person that knows the inner machinations and security details of the mark. She is the one that provides the Phantom Thieves with the intel to take down her father's palace. Her persona is Melody de Winter, the infamous spy from the novel Three Musketeers. Her lack of a head could symbolize the many disguises and aliases that Melody dons for her espionage work, never having a true face. She is a beautiful but dangerous woman as evidenced by the many weapons hidden under her skirt. This connects to Haru who, despite being a meek girl, is actually capable of defying people, she just needs to find her determination. Another nod to Persona fans is how Melody's design resembles the design of the Queen of Hearts boss in Persona Q. Haru's costume is the trickiest because there isn't anything about it that implies a trickster. But the hint is in Melody's message to Haru, emphasizing freedom comes from betrayal, and calling her a princess. In ancient times, the role of daughters of powerful households was to be married off to secure alliances, which is what Haru's father is planning to do. For Haru to be free, she must betray her father and fiancé. So how does this connect with her costume? Well, her costume, despite showing off her cleavage, is actually quite masculine. A white cravat, boy shorts, knee-high socks, Haru is dressed like a 17th century gentleman. Haru's form of rebellion is rebelling against the roles assigned to her as a woman, and she shows this by dressing like a man. This can also be seen in her weapon, her axe. There is nothing feminine or graceful about how she wields her axe, it is clearly too heavy for her. Yet Haru persists in using the cumbersome weapon perhaps symbolizing how her path will be a great burden to her, but she is determined to see it through. I'll only briefly talk about Goro since he doesn't really follow the pattern of the other party members. His costume greatly resembles a prince's costume. Considering people already call him a detective prince, this seems a little egotistical. It could also be that Goro chose this costume so that the Phantom Thieves would see him as someone they could trust, a white knight who came to save the day. If you take a look at Robin Hood, his design and color scheme is actually close to Goro's costume. 
There is also a surprising lack of green, a trademark of the English outlaw. This makes me believe that Goro created Robin Hood to fit in with the Phantom Thieves. He would definitely follow the pattern of virtuous outlaws who help the poor and punish the rich. The only parallel we could see between the two is that they are both trying to take down a powerful ruler. Goro's mastery of the metaverse can be seen in his weapons. Whereas the rest of the cast are still using weapons that exist in reality, Goro is using fantasy weapons. He is using lightsabers, chainsaw swords, and laser guns. His cognition is powerful enough to make these ideas function as real weapons. Thanks for watching. I might have missed on something cultural or something related to their confidant paths, so if you have other insights, do share it with me in the comments below. Until our paths cross again, see you, Phantom Thief.